This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 623 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professionalized wrestling here, live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters, your uh, MC of Mayhem. Uh, and we got a hell of a crew with us. First of all, we do have in the studio, it's Larry. Hi. Crawled up from the Girth Cave to join us here yes. on the Mayhem uh, uh giant axe is delivered right no 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 oh no not yet oh no kayfabe <laughs> giant larry the axe soon. ending soon this it's weekend. awesome do you have pictures of that up yet on your uh, social media for it's dark forge studios not yet it's not done yet it's not done yet nope i will have p- pictures after it is delivered uh, you have to sneak the you have to sneak into my uh instagram stories to see some of that progress yes. there so yep. it's, it's been cool and the and the uh and the uh the scents have been amazing coming from the basement. I apologize for the. I'm last pretty weeks. sure. I'm pretty sure I was high at least three days straight. Uh, no, thanks. no, it, it, no. It was two and a half. No, it's two and a half. Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. Also with us on the line from Poughkeepsie, New York. He's the only one on the Mayhem Show with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. Booyaka, booyaka, June nineteenth. Booyaka, booyaka. It's still Rusev Day. Booyaka, booyaka. <laughs> Wait Hi. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mike. We have to validate this. Hold on. Yep, yep. Up, up. It's Rusev Day. Thank you, yep. calendar. Thank you, calendar. Where's Lana's calendar is one I want to know. And it's, also Sorg, you're only gonna get four days for each month on that. I know. It's gonna be it's gonna be a short calendar. It's like an automatic like leap year calendar or something. And it'll only be like three pages, which seems unfair. But anyway, speaking of Rusev, somebody who looks strangely as handsome tonight is uh, your friend in the mainstream media, mainstream, Matt. Oh, hello. Uh, Sorg, I'm here, and I've brought a very special present tonight. We're going to read a children's book called Nino Wrestles the World. Wow, where did you get that thing? My son checked this out of the library. <laughs> I have not tried it yet, but maybe if you're good, maybe some gold. Oh, jeez. Uh, later on. I'm reading pretty, Rainbow Mayhem show coming I'm up. I'm pretty so. sure that's actually the script for Avengers 4. <laughs> this <laughs> is it, actually it, the leaked script for Lucha Underground Season 4. No! Uh, you dare read it! Don't read it! Don't read it. No spoilers! In. Don't spoilers! <laughs> Let me check the last page. We're just gonna... <gasps> <laughs> Who's left in the cage this time? <laughs> we miss you, Ray Mysterio. And also with us, I can't believe he returned after being here. His first show was like like Patreon in the Bank Mayhem Mania. <laughs> the most <laughs> insane show of the year that doesn't include alcohol. Uh, it is Todd DeFazio of the 2017 Podcast of the Year in the Pittsburgh yeah. City Paper. Yes. You need to bring the belt sometime when you come uh, on. See, you I, I, I do not want to do that. I don't want to walk on somebody's Dude, else's people have brought belts before. Belt That's and, fine. Dude, you know. any chance for somebody to walk in with a championship oh, belt? Ne- next time I'll bring it. Maybe, yeah. Maybe next like, time we'll like, bring he two. He knows that if he brings his belt to the Sorgatron Media Studios, Sorg, you are likely to cash in money in the bank. <laughs> <on that. laughs> who, who knows? Maybe have, next time we'll have two. I do have a large briefcase in the back <laughs> that resembles that I keep a soundboard in that 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 I could go Ronda Rousey domestic violence on you. <laughs> Is the soundboard board in there night. just to weigh it down? What's that? Is the soundboard in there just to give it? Yeah, it doesn't weight? work anymore. It blew up <laughs> a few uh, gigs ago. It just you know, it's it, it's my sensational Sherry brick in the purse. Uh, <laughs> so. 
<laughs> Anyways, this thank you so much for coming back, of yeah. course, and a lot of fun uh, it, to be had tonight. And, of course, you guys joining us. Thank you so much. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Give a shout-out to our friend Basic Sickness. I just borrowed another one of his tunes for our new Mayhem Underground podcast that we had this past week and relaunching of our Lucha Underground coverage with uh, co-executive producer uh, Chris Joseph joining us uh, shortly after the Lucha Underground Season 4 premiere went on off the air. Uh, go check that out and check out our friend BasicSickness.com and check him out on the Facebook and his music videos on YouTube. Uh, also, uh, please drop us an email at our email address. Good times! Good times. Good times at Mayhem, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Our 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show, myself, or Mad Mike. Kind of, you can tell by the tone. Trust me. He's the angry one. Hence the name. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's definitely... Also, also, with the hashtag... MM. MM. Hashtag Sorg. Whenever I think about it. Wrestling and Mayhem Show on the Facebook. Here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, we're having a lot of great discussions. The community is wild over there, sharing a lot of fun things, um, getting getting sad or depressed about the John Cena and Nikki Bella situation. It's up. It's down. Physectomies are reversed. It's it, it's it's just a preview for the next season. I know you didn't intend for that to sound wrong, but it did. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I don't think there's a way for that to sound it's right. It's cut. It's not cut. You know, who it's knows not what's cut? going on? Listen, yeah. I'm not an expert in vasectomies. It's but getting uncut. Just like getting Ron, uncut? 1993. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that you can be a part of in the Wrestling Mayhem Show group, as well as joining us here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on our Facebook uh, live and check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show and be in the chat room like so many of you, like Raider Mike, like Dave Podner, like Tina Keys, like Tommy Trueblood, like Alex Miller, Alex Cars, and a whole bunch of other people hanging with us tonight. Thank you so much, uh, Mayhem Nation, for that. Subscribe to us, iTunes, no, music, pod, uh, Apple Podcasts. I, everything changed the name because now there's Google Podcasts. There's uh, so I need to so change my list. Where again. where are we subscribing? Listen, at? if there's a podcast network that or app that you have, just look up the Wrestling Mayhem Show. If we're not there, hit us up at that email address. What was that again? Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com, and we'll get signed up so you can have your mayhem too. And, of course, thank you to our streaming partner, the 405media.com, that's been carrying us every midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, so you can fall asleep to the sweet, sweet sounds of mayhem. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. This month, we had Patreon in the bank, and uh, Bradley, of course, uh, cashed in for his uh, skyscraper movie poster. Thanks to uh, Rob, cameraman Rob, for these uh, sweet, sweet prices that we're going to have here over the next couple months. Uh, but this month, if you're a Patreon supporter for the month of July, uh, we'll have our Patreon in the bank in probably the first week or two of July for this. Again, we'll do it uh, live on Twitch. I'll actually uh, pre announce it for you guys since it was such a success last month. But this month, you get the you get the cock poster right there. That's right. This is a poster of a chicken silhouette. No, it actually also has John C on it. Pre vasectomy reversal. No, that's the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Look at him. He's like maybe, maybe it's cut, maybe it ain't. Who knows? Uh, but you guys can uh, question that. As he hangs on your wall, if you win Patreon on the bank, again everybody goes in their hat for that and gets a number in the Patreon rumble. And, of course, thank you to the people that are already a part of this fan of the show. $1 level. Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Burke, Tina Keys, Bobby F. J. Town, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment, and at the Pocky Club, $5 level that's going to join us. Wow, that was a wild one for the gold this week that you guys are going to get. Our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley Ruthers, Heel Bradley, that won that last uh, month's poster, and Doc Remedy. Doc, how long is my entrance? Uh, music remedy and at the pizza club ten dollar level billy johnson and jd jones you guys can support the show too and keep the lights on for us here at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show uh, let's talk about some wrestling guys um money in the bank was this past weekend and it was the moneyest of money in the banks uh we had uh, of course uh, was it what? <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about the good show that was this weekend? Wait, yeah, let's start with that one. Kazuna Road. Is that it? <laughs> no, I was going to say Takeover, but. Oh, okay. 
Okay, that'll work too. Wait, why isn't why isn't Takeover on the rundown? Actually, why All right. isn't it on the rundown, Sorg? Slight because, oversight. It's like it's like. Oh, right, if you want to, we can talk about Takeover. I'm just gonna throw. I'm just gonna rip up the format. I'm sorry, uh, so. Sorg. It's called the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Yes, not the Wrestling Format Show. That's All true right? too. What are we doing? Notice there's nothing printed out. That means nothing <laughs> is concrete here on the show. Card just, subject to change. <laughs> Podcast subject to change. Missy, you need to start writing the notes on a cinder block <laughs> and throw it through the window. <laughs> should really be the title. Of the, that should really be the title of this podcast. Podcast subject to change, and we just talk about something new every week. <laughs> this week's about sailboats. All right, so takeover was this weekend. The wrestling stupid. show this weekend, not the entertainment, yes. not the sports entertainment show this weekend. Apparently, um, and I'm sorry, Sunday night. <laughs> It's basically what it should be the subtitle of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Takeover was really good. <laughs> I'm glad you have such great insight into the show. In Take- summary. Okay, it, so. It was. It was amazing. Like, Takeover, ha- it's amazing to me how consistent Takeover has been. Even the not so great Takeovers, which there have not been many, Mm-mm. are still. A, better than the pay-per-view that follows them. And two, like, still averaging a 7 out of 10. You know, I, I, I was, uh, Larry, was I talking with you about this concept, the, the the New Japan concept I was having with NXT? Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking about this. And why is this? Why is this? And, and, and I got to thinking about how, why is New Japan so kick-ass, right? How many shows do they have, right? Um, how many big shows do they have? How, are they on the road as much as WWE guys? And you look at the NXT, and I feel like it's our um, conceptually our New Japan as far as show quality, right? These guys get two a two two and a half hour show every two three to three months. months, right? They do four hours of programming a month for the WWE Network. They get the workshop stuff on the on the house shows far more. Right mm-hmm. or in front of in armories in Date City, um, then when you show up and those guys are vying for an opportunity, of course they're going to blow your mind every time. It, it's also not run by an octogenarian who thinks men dressing in in dresses is funny. Mm. It's because their creative process is organized out of necessity. They have to pre-tape, you know, four episodes at a time uh, when they're at full cell or wherever they are. So they have to know exactly what point they're trying to get to. And they can't stray from that because they've got to do all their stuff in one taping. So all the storylines are set. They know exactly where they're going. They know exactly what they're trying to pay off. And another very important thing, NXT has happy endings. Whereas in WWE, you get heels winning all the freaking time. And it just depresses you. You don't want to see it anymore. People who you don't want to see win, keep on winning. But in NXT, now granted... You know, it went the other way in the main event uh, this past weekend. What happy ending are you talking about? In general, Michael, um, (laughs) you do get a happy ending um, when you go to an NXT show. This takeover ended like Infinity War. (laughs) And we got to wait a whole year to get the resolution? You know know what's great about this main event is that in the back... It feels so good. Yeah, right. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, if they're doing this match a second time between Gargano and Champa, you got to think that Champa is going to find some way to get a win. But as they drag out that whole scene with with Gargano taking Champa to the back of the arena and dropping him through the table, and you're watching Champa get stretchered out, you're like, I, I guess Gargano's going to win this thing. But no, he, you know, it, it, it's just brilliant how they can um, just. It's just says so much about how good Gargano and Champa have been um, in this feud. This is the feud of the year. Nothing is topping this. It's incredible. Um, and, and I don't know if Gargano and Champa will ever get to this level ever again. I mean, you just got to gotta fully embrace and enjoy what they're giving us and mm-hmm. get really excited about the fact that they're – Probably is going to be a third match at some point down the line, and God knows what that's gonna be. And Brooklyn to the death. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I I think Brooklyn might have a third person involved. Mm-hmm. Candace and that Alistair Black. <laughs> oh, because Alistair Black said Johnny could have an NXT title shot. 
Champa interrupted that. I wouldn't be surprised if Champa says, "Hey, I beat Gargano. Where's my NXT title shot?" And Gargano interrupts that, thus maybe setting up a triple threat. See, to I'm me, just, that doesn't saying. feel like a blow off. That feels like a detour, and that's fine because that means we get that match and another match later on. But I, I tell you what, it, it, it's it's awesome that the door's open now for Champa to get the title shot against Black. Mm-hmm. And you could just sidebar this whole thing and send Gargano to fight, I don't know, someone else. I mean, who cares? I mean, Johnny Gargano's going to have the best match anyway. Put him in there with some loser. Um, Fresh off the bus. I don't care. This may be controversial. I don't think that was the best match on the show. Nope. No. I agree. No. Definitely. Nope. Uh, That probably goes to Ricochet and Velveteen Dream. Yeah. Yes, okay. And okay. speaking of which, well, first of all, Podner's in the chat room. He says uh, Champa is a god, an evil god, but a god. Uh, he's a wizard. He's, a, he's also a wizard. He's, he's, he's a wizard. He, he, does, he is a wizard. <laughs> Tiny wizard. Uh, Tina says, kudos to Velveteen Dream with the Hulk Hogan Prince Puma dig with his yep. outfit. Oh, yeah. That was nice really awesome. touch. Dope. It was fucking dope. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's right. Uh, uh, Tina's thinking a stretcher and ambulance or ambulance match between uh, Chomp and Gargano. Oh no, those are lame. Death match. <laughs> those are lame. just straight death match. Brooklyn death match. Mad Mike knows the rules to them. Yeah, actually, barbed wire um, rope C four. It's the first person to say I was a fan of that first. That's <laughs> that, that, that. I thought it was uh, you get led to the warehouse by someone with the offer of a great deal on a purse, and then you were mugged by uh, a. <laughs> no, that. <laughs> The Queen's match. Oh, uh, that's the that's at the start of an open for a Law and Order episode. Actually, yeah. I get it. Uh, wow. Uh, anyways, no, uh, Rick Shea Velatine. I, I think that was uh, a match that you could have completely transposed into the Lucha Underground. You could have put that anywhere. You could have put that PWG, New mm-hmm. Japan, SmackDown, probably not Raw. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere, anywhere but Raw, basically. But Raw. But the, yeah, the range. The range on Prince Puma shooting star press. Like, <laughs> Rock Lesnar could have used that at WrestleMania 19. I mean, I'm just saying. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like that video game, like, he can't do that. <laughs> and he does. He's unbelievable. Awesome. Uh, of course, Lars and, uh, Lars and Alistair Black was amazing as well. Uh, you know, it, it was weird until you see him in the crowd. You're like, what do you mean EC3 isn't on this show? The tag title match was mm-hmm. awesome. I loved it. That title match was great. Uh, oh. Friend of the show, Keith Lee in the audience. Yeah, uh, that, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Who was it that, uh, who's the friend of the show that got his ass beat by Gargano? Hmm? Oh, right. One of the guys. In oh, the Daniel the Eads, on? the current RWA yeah. heavyweight champion, was one of the um, uh, uh, suit helper guys yeah. when they were helping Ciampa out and. And Gargano went after it, and and he completely got clocked by him. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's like he's a big guy too. So uh, to see him punked out by Gargano was kind of fun. Uh, he's the man of tomorrow, Daniel Daniel Eads. You Not anymore? Oh, he, <laughs> he's the he's the I think it's yesterday, Daniel Eads uh, <laughs> guy. Um, so it would be interesting to see if that gets addressed at RWA next month. But you know, good on him for getting a look. I mean, he's he's a guy that looks like he should be in WWE. He's he's a uh, been a good talent uh, to, to, to watch um, over at uh, RWA down the road. He's got Jamie Noble written all over him. He's <laughs> really. <laughs> he's just a very yeah, tall. Yeah, the agent suit. He's a very tall Jamie Noble, basically, <laughs> is what you're getting. But a nice blue tie. The blue tie really stuck out. Yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah, I, sure. Hard to miss. Hard to miss. Exactly. Um, can we talk about Money in the Bank yet? Well, let me let me throw something out real quick. Just one more thought about NXT before we move on, because this has been kicking around in my brain as um, we see people. Actually, it makes sense tonight too, because someone uh, Sanity made their debut on SmackDown tonight, and um, oh. immediately there are tweets from people talking about, "Boy, I hope they really hope they don't screw up these guys after they get called up." And I'm kind of like, if I had a nickel for every time I've heard that one, mm-hmm. um, because it seems to be the norm. And I finally kind of figured out, like in my brain, I've kind of figured out what NXT is. NXT has become kind of like the bachelor slash bachelorette party for a great independent wrestler or something like this. It's your last night on the town. It's your last great <laughs> feud. It's your last great matches before you get called up to the main roster, make a lot of money, but watch like everything kind of like 
wither away to dust. So uh, that's what kind of NXT is now in my mind. You make a lot of money and lose all self-respect. Kind of. Oh, <laughs> well, speaking of which, moving up to... Are we going to Big Cass? Big... What? <laughs> is that the segue to Big oh, Cass? Oh, that was not the say. Se- all right, Big Cass <laughs> has come to terms with WWE announced today... I don't know. Did they, they they tell him as he arrived at the arena for SmackDown? Is that why we got it today? Uh, he had his match with Daniel Bryan. There were reports. I don't know what's supposedly he people were mad because he took liberties with a midget. Did he? I you don't do that in 2018, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, enough about Enzo. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's a joke Good. because he's a horrible person. I. <laughs> They were so high on him for so yeah. long, and I, I don't know what what happened. I wasn't high on him, especially when they broke I didn't the tag he, team up. I was like, this, I didn't this think it was sucks. bad. I mean, he's I no he Braun. Go ahead. What's up? His his injury completely derailed any momentum he had, and yeah. he never got back. No, no. But to give up on him so readily, or he, but that that definitely wasn't the reason he was let go. They wouldn't cut no. him. For that. I mean, he's too he, tall. He screwed up. Something happened, and he screwed yeah. up. Yeah. Well, and, I, mean, I, I mean, honestly, I think you got to do more than punch a midget to get fired from <laughs> WWE. <laughs> Brunside. I mean, okay, okay, okay. Punch, punch a little person. Brunside. Sorg. Sorg. In November, you'll be able to see the realest guys be crowned TNA Tag Team Champions. So <laughs> you can look forward to that. Yeah, there's that. Real and Paul William. So uh, mean, you'll you'll be able to uh, appreciate. Come into the WrestleCon near you. This is going to be like a plant, just like uh, when Vince Russo went to WCW, just to screw up the competition. So they're going to see, he's, he's just letting them go so that they can go to like ROH and Impact just to like screw up their promotion. You believe that rumor, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you it's believe totally you believe that idea. <laughs> Jeez, you've been going to the wrong website, sir. We need, to, we need, we need to help you. What website? You've been reading the wrong part that of Twitter. It was on the network. It was on the network. It was on their own <laughs> network. They don't tell lies on that. <laughs> no, no, no. There is no revisionist history on the WWE Network no. at all. No, no. of course Jeez. not. Oh. The second after Stone Cold Steve Austin said Austin 316 says, I'll whip your ass. There were thousands of signs in the arena. <laughs> thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands of signs in the arena? Yes, for Austin. <laughs> because it was immediate. Weren't they in, like, they were in Madison Square Garden, right? No. Well, I don't know if it was the next day or anything, but, yeah. Ooh. No, I, don't, I think you're thinking about when he, like, actually uh, finally did a Stone Cold Stunner to Vince. No, I'm just thinking you can't September fit hundreds 22nd, of thousands of people 1997. into that arena. 1997, that's right. Um, <laughs> no, I, I know the exact date because it was my mom's birthday, and I was pissed I couldn't watch Raw that night. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, how times wow. have changed. I, I was watching. Thanks. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> the night that, uh, chat room. There's up something in the change. chat room. What is still yeah. in the chat room? Um, I was is it very the... upset. I he he powered over him through the flimsiest table of all time. It was terrifying <laughs> to watch. Uh, but hey, Slammiversary is coming up. So, uh, you, oh, know. No. you never know. Uh, you never know. Oh, it's probably a no compete clause. Uh, for a let go like that? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, Thirty days. Speaking uh, of people, what? What? Oh, okay. You guys have a conversation over there. Speaking of people that turn people's stomachs uh, uh, on the show, James Ellsworth returned. Yes, yes. The, well, the highlight of Money, Money in the, the Bank. Bank was creepy Oscar. <laughs> James <laughs> Ellsworth, the greatest surprise you could have gotten out of that pay per view. Did anybody well, else? He, he pulled the mask off, which is creepy enough, and you saw the chin. Did anybody it, else just reactively go ew? No, I no, popped. You no. popped. I scared Sorg. my twenty-year-old cat to death, and then Sorg, she came back to life. Do you remember how I told you last night the WWE was um, like the the main event for Extreme Rules last year is probably going to be the main event for Extreme Rules this year? Yes. Do you remember what they did? At Money in the Bank last year, that I called specifically. No. Yes. The James Smith was going to grab the. Oh. Yes. Why yes. are we in a loop? Why are we in a temporal? Welcome to loop? it. Welcome to it. So that so that James Ellsworth could go and have an epic encounter with Gilberg at IWC, available on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, and you know wow. you know what? I bet that's wow. why they let Big Cass go. 
so they could afford to bring Ellsworth back. So they could afford and to bring Ellsworth. They had a, and they had to clear money. that salary cap. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then one day, you know, we'll have I don't, big cast and Ryback at we had, we had We had that conversation yesterday about how uh, WWE kept hiring all the, like, uh, like the well, t- well established <laughs> veterans from TNA, I'm yeah, and it. all the new what? guys that are developed there just don't like don't get a shot anymore. Breaking news: What's happening on SmackDown, guys? I can't even. I can't even. Oh my god, this booking is so good. Vince is a genius. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> that octogenarian crazy son of a bitch has done it again. <laughs> Miz is God. <laughs> he did it. Miz is God. So all right. So. Hold on. I, <laughs> Just for derailing the entire they're, show. They're into the fourth man of this gauntlet match, and everyone has gotten over. It's amazing. I don't know how they're doing it. Brian first went up against Big E, uh, really long match. Then Joe, and he and Joe had awesome run. And Brian was able to beat Joe despite being dead, like almost literally dead. The next person coming out is Miz. Well, you gotta He's, tell him how he beat, how he beat Joe. You I, didn't, him how he beat Joe? I didn't think it how was. He, what it was one of the deals where they're both getting counted out, and, and Brian slips away and sneaks into the ring at nine, and Joe gets left like a step behind and gets counted out at ten. And they cut to Joe, and he's like, "The fuck," you know. Anyway, continue. So, so Brian's laying dead in the ring. The next guy is the Miz. Miz runs out the fastest I've ever seen him. Like, <laughs> like the Cleveland Browns just won the fucking Super Bowl. He gives Miz the skull crushing finale. He gives Brian the skull crushing finale immediately and pins him, and then just throws him out of the ring. You missed a you missed a, a thing that happened. Yeah, you see the Basham brothers. Or no, the ba- oh, I've been calling them the Basham brothers, brothers. Yes. the Bludgeon Throwing brothers. Slip. Oh. <laughs> Ruth, who fights AJ Styles? And the winner is Mad Mike because I don't care. I just want to see who it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for the detour story. That was just yes, that yeah. was amazing. The sound turned down like you know, the corner of my eye. I can see him looking at the room and like, oh, just <laughs> sprinting. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Anyways, back to money in the bank. James Ellsworth. Money Ellsworth's in the bank. James Ellsworth is back. Nice about money in the bank. <laughs> Ellsworth is back. It's great. I'm so happy he's back. You should have both iconics dressed as Oscar. God, Ellsworth is back. On I'm top sorry, of that, I'll it's still not enough for me to renew my WWE no, it, Network subscription. No, 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 no. Uh, should it have could, been both iconics dressed as Oscar. <laughs> That's what I thought it was going to be. Like was, standing each, like on each other's shoulders, like a giant Oscar <laughs> monster, like Go Jack Horseman. Let's talk about Ronda Rousey, Mike. Let's not. Oh, oh man! Oh, that was your great cue. match. That was your cue. Great I was waiting match. for your cue. What? Fine match. I'll jump in. Great match. Okay. Ronda's unnatural at mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Just not talking. At least in the ring. She's got some work to do on the verbals and whatnot. Uh, you don't want her at your announced position uh, for an extended period of time. But, like, when she gets in the ring, it's freaking great. She, she almost just, like, Nia. does. What? Nia is 100 pounds heavier than her. Who's killing who? Come on, she, man. <laughs> um, did you see that Drudo throw? She almost yeah, killed Nia. she's probably done it 10 million freaking times. I'm pretty sure she knows what she's doing. She comes from Judo, Mike. Yes, but <laughs> Judo, you're supposed to hurt people. Wrestling, you're supposed to not hurt people. Exactly, and she already is pretty good at not hurting people. She's throwing <laughs> strikes. Her strikes look good. She hasn't I hurt mean, anyone in her from? last two matches. Hey, those Where referees. Those, <laughs> those referees. Those referees got the referee the match after they took some punches from her. They're all right. They're cool. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. by the way, by the way, being, being a referee in WWE and being told, hey, you're going to take a punch from an MMA fighter tonight. <laughs> like, seems like a bad day at the job, right? I don't want to break up another Brock Lesnar brawl. Don't worry. He's never coming back. It's Ronda <laughs> Rousey. <Right. laughs> that might be worse. <laughs> um, no, I thought it was. I thought it was a that's what I was looking for. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> I thought it was a fun match. I love, uh, and of course, what are you going to do but have some shenanigans with uh, uh, Rhonda and the Money in the Bank and Alexa Bliss? And I just woke up my echo, I'm sure. Um, nope. No, it's good? Okay. Yep. But uh, <laughs> I, no, I thought it was what it needed to be. We're going to have something fun at SummerSlam with her, I'm sure. Uh, but, uh, and, and I don't believe that Rhonda's been painted in a corner here, Mike. Yeah. No, she's been booked in a corner. Booked in a corner. Because 
Because they can't have her lose, but they don't want her to be champion. No. Well, she'll lose eventually, but you don't beat her right off the bat. No, nope. yeah, but give her the title. So what's the problem? The champion. What's the problem? You've never seen a BS finish to a title match in your life before. A month ago, AJ Styles and Nakamura kicked each other in the dick and knocked each other out. <laughs> We get BS endings to title matches all the time, Mike. I don't see where this anger's coming from. Why are you focusing this on her? Maybe not her fault. Maybe that's why NXT is so good. Maybe that's why New Japan is so good because they make way for these fucking title matches that they give us winners. There's not a lot of watching, but you weren't watching New Japan and you weren't watching NXT. You're watching WWE main roster where BS rules and stuff gets strung along together. And we're going in an endless circle around and around and around. And you can skip Raw every single Monday like me and not miss anything and still talk intelligently about wrestling on a Tuesday night podcast. What what did I say? What did I say? Wait, wait a minute. Did you just give away away a secret here? (laughs) Are you saying I never have to watch Raw again? Every week. It will be zero minutes. Oh. <laughs> and honestly, I don't blame you. What have I been telling you on Mike? What have I, Mike, what have I been telling you on the wrap up about how I watch WWE anymore? Yeah, you don't watch it. You half watch it while you're doing other shit. No, no, not that part of it. That wasn't the point I was trying to make last night. <laughs> <Good point. laughs> That's not the point I was trying to make last night, but oh boy, also I'm kind of make. accurate. No, I'm I, watching intently on the product, and that's why I get so angry with it. Listen, listen. I, I you watch New Japan, you watch Rise Wrestling, a thirty man Iron Man match. I don't show up for Raw expecting what I just saw over the weekend. Right? But you it, should. It, what, wait, wait, should I? This is uh, how, this is how, why you, why why are they going to change and improve their shitty writing? Uh, when when they're the most sought over, financially sought after program in like cable history right now, I'm not. I'll defense. start expecting better creative from WWE main roster when I start getting better creative from main <laughs> roster. <laughs> That's WWE. it. That's it. Until I mean, then, I'm just it's just junk food. It's wrestling Walmart. What it more is. do you want me to say? It is. Right. It is. It's it's something right. for me to consume. In the, that's kind of like something I like. That, that to put into me that so that, I think, I think, that, I that, that, that maybe I feel a tiny <laughs> bit shitty about afterwards, but I'm going to come back to it anyway. I feel like we need Sorg, to have an intervention. Sorg, have, are you in an abusive relationship with wrestling? <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> are you, no, Mike, are you saying no, Raw is his impact? Well, give me an NXT takeover, man. It's really good. Every once in a while. <laughs> man. Well, you're going to... You're going <laughs> to tear away at your face there if you guys aren't on video. I'm sorry. No, there was a lot like, of scratching. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what else? You know what else? Uh, you, you're, it is not like junk food. A match of money in the bank. You know what you can put in your body and feel good about? Slice on Broadway. Thank you to our friends at SliceOnBroadway.com. Right up the street here. It's all the pepperoni and cheese and bread and tomato sauce and whatever you put on your pizza. Pineapple, maybe. Or, we won't judge you. So uh, the time last year I was eating Slice on Broadway. Th- at this time last year? Th- on this day last year. On I was this, eating- on this oh. June 19th yes. of 2017. Yes, I was eating Slice on Broadway. That's nice, isn't it? Was, it? Was just, I was go. eating it with you, Sorg. We had a pizza party. We had a pizza party? We did. We I don't remember the pizza party. Year. It's a pizza party every Tuesday, Mike. All right, but we had a pizza party for me last year. It was oh, great. Oh, happy pizza party. It was great. We all sat upstairs. Mm-hmm. I, I had like some group And I with- literally, like, and, and I went to, I, we, my brother came into town uh, to do some stuff. And I was like, well, you're here. Let's go to Slice on Broadway. Uh, so <laughs> I've double sliced today. Uh, but anyways, go check them out. They're right here. As I mentioned, the OG supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, nope, that's not right. That's a screensaver. Uh, there it is. Also, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, Carnegie PA Main Street, and the East End, four locations in the area. And the ca- the campaign that they don't know about. I don't know. Maybe they have. I don't know if you guys have been tweeting them. If you have a Broadway Avenue in your town, just like Alex Carr's down in Long Beach, California, take a picture of an empty storefront. Tell them, hey, there's a Broadway. You should put a slice here. And uh, make sure you tag them. 
uh, on Facebook, Slice on Broadway, uh, Slice on Broadway on Instagram, or PGH underscore Slice on Twitter, and say, please slice me, bro. Uh, here's a here's a here's a storefront on uh, Broadway Avenue, and uh, I'm telling me I'm sent you. Don't kick the door down. Uh, thank you so much, Slice on Broadway. Uh, so, anyways, let's get back around. It. So, Todd. <laughs> Yes, I, you're still here. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I'm enjoying listening to you guys. I'm just trying to find a place <laughs> to jump in. No, you know it's fine. It's been a runaway train, and I'm glad that you're 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 at least a little bit trying to take a grip on the g- caboose and stay on here. <laughs> uh, but what is, what uh, money in the bank? You watched it. Uh, right. What 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 did you like out of the night? Uh, I love what they're doing with Rousey. The new direction: less talking, less smiling. Less fanish. Less funny buddy with Natty. Yeah. Yeah. She, uh, they were taking a weird direction with her. I think they're protecting her pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, as she, uh, you know, they're, I don't think they're going to let the reins go all the way yet, but, uh, I like what they're doing with her. I, uh, I hate what they're doing with, uh, Roman Reigns. Um, I always say when it rains, it bores. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I did turn off the pay per view during that match, <laughs> and then and then to put a, and then to pair him with Lashley, mm-hmm. leading into the next step. I, I'm just like, could that be the two most boring people in the entire company? <laughs> right, right, right. Now? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it it definitely is. It's not working well for that. I mean, I can't. We're, we're having that discussion here. Like Lashley. I don't remember Lashley being terribly memorable the first time around, right? Right, no. I don't know why they brought him He was back. like Vince's goon at one point. It, isn't that... It, wasn't he involved in the Trump hair match? He, yeah. he was He was Trump's favorite wrestler, Bobby Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's... The only, the only reason I remember that is because one of my friends has a married couple friend on Long Island, and their names are Bobby and Lindsay. <laughs> and every time I think of that fucking angle, you know, and, <laughs> but he, he's not Mr. Personality by no, any means. No, no, no. It's weird because, I mean, you see, like, you know, the Hardys like went and did stuff and came back. By the way, the Hardys 24 7 was incredible. Uh, I, I don't know if you got the chance to watch it, Mike, but they even do cover like Jeff Hardy's most recent DUI, <laughs> you know, uh, since returning to the WWE. Like, they, they touch on all that stuff. I was stuff. shocked he came back after they, that. They show, uh, they show the Jeff Hardy incident at Victory Road with Sting and talk to oh, Bischoff wow. and Sting about it and show the footage and show Bischoff in the ring and you hear him calling in the match. I need um, to watch it. It's I need good. To watch it. it's they be- talk about the development of the of the broken characters and like like filming it and everything. Let's watch it. It's- Did they show footage of the like the of the ultimate deletion? Stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, and even oh, and okay. Abyss makes an appearance. Um, really? It, yes, it is for real. Oh, it's shit. as if they okay. completely have access to TNA footage, which they do, and they, it's just like they were doing any other wrestling documentary series. Wow, one. it is I'm incredible. Excited. It is real. It is. It is. I kind of wish they did that with the Kurt Angle one. I uh, yeah. Well, I think it's before they cut whatever deal, right? Yeah. Um So. I and mean, I still think your GWN is going to be absorbed any day now, or you're going to find out that. Uh, uh, I mean, I think you're going to find out. I can add two bucks to my subscription and get GWN footage Sorg, or something. Sorg, I I wouldn't be surprised if there may be something coming down the pipeline where additional footage may be added to the network. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. saying. Uh, <laughs> Just no, say no. You you act like you know something. Like I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing at something, but I wouldn't be surprised. No, yeah, no. I I mean, it just it just kind of looks like that the way that it, it's going and as open as they are. They, there's already been stuff about talks about like things like evolve maybe being added to the network, and you know they're kind of reaching down into those uh, uh, other shows. Uh, Money in the bank. We didn't talk about any actual Money in the banks. Of course, Alexa Bliss winning and. Uh, and, and cashing in as we did mention. I was going to say one of them's already cashed in, so we don't really have to talk about it. Uh, what I, I do want to talk about, I think, very handedly, uh, that men's money in the bank is my favorite money in the bank because you went into it, and other than maybe Kofi, you felt like anybody could have gotten that. Yeah, but I feel mm-hmm. bad because I knew Kofi wasn't going to win it, and I wanted him to win it. Really Me badly. too. Me too, but, a little bit. That would have been but like really, Ziggler winning the Intercontinental with they, Title. Would they? Ha- I mean, you, you have 
like these dreams in your head of like, man, it'd be great if Kofi won it. And then like they they did a free bird roll with the briefcase. We're like, well, who's going to cash it in? Who knows? Um, and oh, pancakes. Sorry, you're doing that writing thing again. I, <laughs> I'm doing that that uh, thinking and like, oh, that'd be great if they did this. It'd be great if they did that. Uh, but but uh, Bobby Roode, it could have elevated him. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of opportunity there. And they and, gave it to the one person who didn't really. But it, but it felt True. like I agree. With yes, that. but yeah, he didn't need it other than a reason to bring it back around. And you don't know what they're going to do with it too. Like there was, there's probably something around. You know, we see something like that. It's not the obvious thing, right? It's it's comes around to it. I mean, like, I don't know. Bra- Braun came out last night. and said, "As soon as Brock Lesnar shows his face, I'm cashing in." That seems pretty definitive to me. I think that okay. almost is um, a good way to to kind of work this extended absence of Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. Um, you use his absence to build up Braun. His mere absence implies that he is afraid of Braun. Braun says he's going to cash in the second he walks in the door. Brock doesn't show up. Brock must be afraid of Braun. Him, him saying inevitably he's, gonna... he's going to show up, and then but, we, then it goes down. But see, that would work if Brock hadn't already beaten Braun. He's, right, beaten, but, he's beaten Braun before one on one. He's like one of the only people to have done that. Right. But that was in WWE years mm-hmm. a while ago. Brock can say, I'm better than I was back then. I'm tougher, whatever. Um, I think enough time has passed that you can reasonably expect a different outcome this time um, in a rematch. Hmm. I, I hope so. Because I, I that, think, that belt needs to be back on Raw. I, I think. Braun saying he's going to cash it in immediately just says that we're not going to see Brock Lesnar until SummerSlam. We're yep. not even going to see him until the, uh, in the paper in the Raws leading up to SummerSlam. Related headline that just came up as I was opening my Google app to try to look up something else. Uh, don't ask Triple H about Brock Lesnar's status while he's talking about the UK tour. <laughs> so I think that kind of puts where that. Why? What happened? Well, yeah, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nice uh, Dutch door action. Like at SummerSlam, Brock is going to lose the universal title to either Braun or whoever wins the fatal whatever way match mm-hmm. at Rolls. Oh, Lashley, excuse me. Sorry. Right here um, in Pittsburgh, PA. Mayhem yeah. represent. And at the same time, Rousey's probably going to win the Raw Women's title and essentially be Lady Brock Lesnar because she's not going to defend the title ever. Mm-hmm. So they're running into the same problem with Brock Lesnar. That they are that they have with Ronda Rousey. So you think that that's what they're doing with Rousey? I think they're going to build Rousey up to the point where she's untouchable, and I think she's going to lay down for Charlotte at some point. Oh yeah, next year at WrestleMania. Ooh. Yeah, that'd be good. Ne- ne- next year at WrestleMania. But and th- and there's a big difference between Ronda, you know, defending the title every you know month or so, and Brock Lesnar just ghosting on us after WrestleMania and just disappearing until. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Summer but, but if Ronda doesn't have like matches on Raw, I'd argue it's more frustrating. Well, it's not like the Universal Title is getting defended. So, on Raw I think either. she's going to be there. Yeah, but uh, but at least Ronda shows up on Raw occasionally mm-hmm. and does segments. And stuff. What's that, Todd? Like, I think Ronda is going to be there more than you think. Definitely more than Lesnar. Well, I, th- I think she's full. <laughs> I think she's full. Not, that's not a. Like, I, that's a. I think I'm she's going to be a full Lesnar. blown. She's going to be there Monday every Monday. Maybe three Mondays out of she's the month. She's probably not doing house shows. Yeah. Probably. Well, no, right. she is no. doing house shows. That's the thing. Oh, really? Like from what I heard, she she did tag matches at like on like the European tour and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. She's wrestling at the MSG house show, and I'm like, yeah. why the fuck can't we just have her wrestle on Raw and book her like a normal person? Maybe this is her getting the kinks worked out too. I I you guess, know? but but if you have to do that, wait. Unintroduced. Ronda, okay, okay. Mike, it's Mike, Mike okay, wait, they okay. Here's an intervention. They didn't have a choice on when they were going to introduce here's a, Wait, wait, wait. He, he, wait, wait. Us. Here's an intervention. Mike, yeah. I know you want Ronda Rousey to be just another regular wrestler so you see her every week. But she told me she was going to be. Yes. She Ronda, said that. Ronda yes. is a damn liar. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Let's get that out of the way. Let's just say that's a rule. Let's set it aside. Um, right. So. You have a special attraction like her. Mm-hmm. She's your Andre the Giant of this era. 
No. no. Go. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm not no, going to agree with that. You Giant don't Giant just Giant. put her out there every week. Uh, but Andrea Giant implies that there's no one like her in the entire wrestling industry. There isn't. There, there isn't. Baszler. There isn't. No, uh, no, not dude. even close. Shayna Baszler was it's, never it's, as no. big. In no, 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 no. Or anywhere else in MMA as Ronda Rousey ever But we're not talking about as popular. We're talking about She is a special attraction. And if you use her as anything other than a special attraction, ex UFC star, you know, if you see her, it's a big deal. Okay. If um, you don't use her any other way than that if you treat her like just another girl you sign and we're doing this thing like even if you treat her like Shayna baszler you're losing money counter argument ken shamrock it was ken a, shamrock was one of no 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 ufc can you take ken shamrock ken shamrock ken shamrock was ken shamrock and wwf in the 90s was like the Bellator fighters or whoever that gets featured on TNA today. It, it, the UFC was a C-less sport in the 90s. It was nowhere near its potential. Like It would be like if you took... Um, Bobby Lashley put him on TNA? <laughs> no. No, Tank, I'm trying to think Tank so. Tank Abbott on WCW. Lawrence Taylor and Bam Bam Bigelow. No, that's completely different. Lawrence Taylor was an NFL Hall of Famer. Yes. That's completely different. How okay, top people on UFC. You really only signed on for one match. Top people in UFC are on the level of of a top NFL person, I think. If you drop today, them in the rest. Not, today, yeah, not ten today. Years. Taylor, Lawrence Taylor didn't sign a contract no. to become a WWE wrestler. He signed on for one match at a gimmick WrestleMania. Okay, okay. I need a better example to, example for Lawrence Taylor. But still, you well, you don't see where I'm coming from. Uh, but I see where you're coming from. I don't agree with how I don't agree. That's how she should be used. Mm -hmm. You may one day see them put Ronda Rousey in a match on Raw to pop a rating, but that's going to be the purpose. It's going to be a pop a rating. You keep running her out there every single week, people are going to get tired of it. You can't do the same thing over and over again. That's why you're sick to death of Dolph Ziggler. Can you see them every week for the last like ten years? But Dolph Ziggler, ten years. <laughs> had to work it in. <laughs> but Dolph Ziggler is completely different. Like Dolph Ziggler is complacent for complacency's sake. Like, all right. If Ronda Rousey wrestled every week, I'd be good with it. Mm -hmm. Like, it, even if it was just tag matches, because they're not really booking her. Because to book someone, you have to book them right. in to progress angles either way we have to end this conversation because i just got a note from the producer that she's lost in this conversation because you keep saying ufc and she keeps hearing kfc and they're not a sponsor so we need to move on <laughs> anyways i want popcorn chicken <laughs> there you go uh you yeah, had to work in the back some way right? in other news in other news in a in some faraway land that that some uh faraway fictional land named the United Kingdom, uh, a tournament is going on that we don't believe in uh, until Monday when we see uh, it on uh, on uh, on TV. Oh, wait, it's pre-taped? I'm happened. confused. I thought they were live next week no. with uh, the WWE UK wait, tournament. Oh, is the tournament going on now or is it pre time in the UK? Apparently they're airing um, and they're recording now. Uh, so I'm avoiding the internet. But anyways... Um, um, don't follow any WWE uh, channels on Instagram because they will spoil something for you. Nope. And I'm very upset about it. Yep. Anyways. So that's happening. But along with that was the announcement for the Triple H and Johnny Saint, the new GM of NXT UK. That's awesome. Which seems like the right thing to do. Because you got to think, if they're going to do a UK show, it's not like UK Raw. It's not like a 205 Live. This is still developmental they're pulling in people from the area you know regionally and 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 you it's know wrestling. doing stuff with them right they're wrestling they're they're hey and they're wrestling, they're wrestling. i'm <laughs> so. excited for another show that's going to be better than raw <laughs> but with an accent yes <laughs> i mean i can't hate that there's, so. there's a thousand percent more chance of doctor who references on nxt uk than there is on raw and so i'm that's, entirely on board and that's a win you want wrestling yes. with an accent July 8th, 
G1 special in San Francisco at the Cow Palace. I think it's a little more than an accent. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. In, oh, I was, yeah. There's a lot of British guys on that accent. show, too. So, um, yeah. So, uh, I'm excited for this. Except for that it's another hour of wrestling that we'll have to try to watch every week. Um, but uh, <laughs> Midweek war. Midweek war. Midweek. Ah. Um, it's, midweek. it's a midweek infinity war at this point. Yeah. yeah. NXT, that doesn't end well for anyone. NXT 205 Live ROH Impact. I think we're just going to do an uh, uh, all NXT shows podcast, so we're going to call it a uh, developing situation. Um <laughs> G one starts at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock or eight o'clock. Eight o'clock Eastern. Eastern. Oh, because they're in, in America. They're in San Francisco. Dreaming? You're re- oh wait, you're really selling us on this new Japan. Larry, oh yeah, I'm um, trying to get you off that Larry, stupid network. Larry, what? I know we do this later. You know what? No, I'm just going to do it later because your thing is, what did you learn from New Japan this week? Yeah, we'll do uh, that. So later. hold on that later. Uh, but anyway, so WWE uh, UK NXT. That's so many letters is happening uh that's pretty cool uh larry i do want you to tell me before we head to the break about what is happening in the world of street fighter because i know you watched the entire thing oh you're talking about the uh, um kenny omega versus xavier woods in street fighter yes at uh e3 e3 um yeah so they had a street fighter tournament um first to five wins and the losers had to eat habanero peppers to the stem and mm-hmm. you can go on youtube and there's an hour-long stream of it this has been going on a while because i just accidentally brought up a video between the two of them from 2016 yeah oh yeah there, yeah there's there the whole history of it they've there have been tweets back and forth even the official street fighter channel got involved on the tweets well they were they were broadcast i believe on the official channel yeah. Um, uh, you know, great lines. I know like Omega saying, enjoy the main event, uh, Xavier. It's the only one you're going to get. Um, it, it, th- this is, this is like the best of internet. <laughs> he, he called, he called, he called out their bet, their bad trash talking for not bringing their writers with them. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. he, he talked about, uh, yeah, he basically just bashed every bad thing about WWE that but, everyone else makes fun of on that. But it also was show. proven that the New Day is better in Street Fighter than the Elite than the than the Elite. <laughs> but <laughs> because first they had a team battle. True. Mm-hmm. True. First they had a team battle and I'm just guessing the Young Bucks are not good at Street Fighter. Nope. Really? Yeah, they're yeah. just like dragged along they, by Kenny. Yep. <laughs> but but, but neither neither were the New Day. The New Day were not good at Street Fighter either. No, Kofi's good. He was okay. Kofi's Kofi's good. I, I watch a lot of up up down down. Kofi's Kofi's better at fighting games than Big E is definitely. But Unless it's you. It, I, I I got a, a good chuckle out of uh, during the fin- the final match. Uh, Kenny Omega was playing as Cody for the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> there is a Street Fighter character named Cody, and it was yes. hilarious. He looks like Cody. Rhodes. He looks yeah. like Cody Rhodes. <laughs> he does. He looks exactly he like does. this the dude Cody Rhodes. Also, yeah. this must be a Capcom thing because the, the the new guy from uh, the new uh, um, Devil May Cry looks a lot like Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Too. Like and, scary and also, like Cody Rhodes. Um, Xavier Woods has a character in Bomberman. Yes. yes. Can we this? Like, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> like, I, I kind of just want to buy the new Bomberman. So I can play as Xavier Woods. You know, I mean, if, if anything ever happens with Xavier Woods in WWE, like he has a career as just a YouTuber or a Twitcher, I guess. Right. I mean, because yeah. he's, he's built this brand up. I don't know if WWE like I, I'm hoping he, he has copyright of it, you know, because oh of up, up, down, down. Yeah, they're not affiliated with that. Yeah, they, uh... they've, they've started kind of carrying a little bit of it on. They promote, like, they promote it. They promote it on like the YouTube thing. But but a lot of them are doing their own thing, too. Yeah, he has his own sponsors. Yeah, he has his yeah. own sponsors on Up Up Down Down, and they're set. Like sometimes he'll sponsor the WWE game, obviously. Yeah, but like they have other sponsors. Like they had sponsors for Crunchyroll at one point. They had sponsors for this. Um, oh, it was like it's like a powdered juice drink. Like Miz was fighting someone in Dragon Ball Z Fighter, and he was not good. But they're they have their own sponsors and stuff like. Yeah. Like they're completely separate. 
from WWE. I kind of like that other career that he has on that other website I can't mention. <laughs> yeah, he, he had like a match with Paige. Oh something, yeah, something. yeah. I believe it was the handicap match. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely. Yeah, I think was. somebody tagged in. Uh, anyways, <laughs> well, on that note, uh, speaking of tagging in, uh, he says before he reads what the ad is, you can tag in Wrestling Mayhem Show and helping you with your getting the word out on your project. That we may or may not. <laughs> I just hear a big sigh from the back. That was the producer. <laughs> <laughs> like, I heard myself. that from the other side of the room through these giant headphones, a sigh. <laughs> Sorg, I could hear that sigh from Poughkeepsie. <laughs> she is sighing because she knows I'm about to give an email to contact her. Uh, but if you want some great segues like this to help promote your product, looking to advertise, uh, advertise with the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's a thing. More more detail, details on our advertising plans and how we can help you. Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com today. We'll be back with the big question and more mayhem after this note. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. So superb are his talents that out-of-this-world contenders line up to challenge him. Here comes the first one. Ooh. I feel like we should do a Mad Lib. <laughs> he should just leave details out, and we should Mad Lib it. There it is. Matt <laughs> Carlin. It is the Guanajuato Mummy. Nino versus La Momia de Guanajuato. Oh, we War. are not qualified to read this at War. all. <laughs> All right, let's They're go across the street and get somebody from the Oh, show. no. Garza's hating us right now down in El Paso, but uh, it is a wrestling mayhem show. Mad Mike reading excerpts from, what was the name of the book again? Matt. Uh, yes, this book is called Nino Wrestles the World mm. by Yuyi Morales. Mainstream Matt there. Mad Mike up in Poughkeepsie, New York. Larry from the basement. You need to talk to Joseph into making Lucha Underground a children's series children's book series we dropped we, we dropped a lot of ideas on him that you know when you when we're every time we interview him if, we, if like mike or one of us like drops an idea and you're just like i like that you're just like oh fuck this is gonna be a next season <laughs> i'm convinced if i lived in la i'd have a co-writing credit <laughs> that's true <laughs> or a restraining order that's also true and also Whoa. todd todd defagio of the 2017 podcast of the year <laughs> idiot radio where can people find Idiot Radio? Idiotradio.net. That's right. DoubleDshow.com. That's right. I also have another project I'm working on. Uh-oh. Jim Cren, No Restrictions. There you go. Go to the Jim, nice. Cren, Jim Cren fan page. I'm the co-host. Producer guy. Uh, it's it's a really cool experience because like that guy's like my... Him, him Stern, and mm-hmm. for some odd reason, Bubba were my <laughs> idols growing up. And... Uh, you know, I got to work with Bubba. I got to work with Kren now. We're saying Bubba the Bulldog, not Bubba, Bubba, the, Bull, not Bubba yeah. the Love Sponge. No, not Bubba the Love yeah. Sponge. Yeah, I was, remember, we got a broader crowd here, and yeah. that's one they're probably going to know. Yeah, so. <laughs> I got real local, real yinzer Bubba the there. Bulldog, who, uh, did he train with, along with Kurt Angle or something, I was believe, it? I believe that's something? what he I don't says. know. Kind of weird. Everybody claims to have trained Kurt Angle. Right. <laughs> I, don't I don't think he trained him. I think he trained with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like it's Brandon K had to do, when we had him on, we had a distinction with that because they like show Kurt Angle and like in right. the, like there's a picture of him like with Brandon K like recently and yeah. everything. Um, so you know, give a little credit to the new school, but I mean, it's just like like half of Pittsburgh trainers were like, yeah, I trained Kurt Angle. It's like, yeah. well, wait, who the fuck trained Kurt <laughs> Angle? You couldn't have all done it. Is it? Did it take a village? Uh, but that's Pittsburgh for you. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, great stuff. And of course, you know, I was on Idiot Radio. Uh, when was it March? February, February, March. Yeah, it was like around that. there. A lot of fun. Uh, really, you guys have a good time over there. I love it. It's like a, it's like a, uh, the love child of uh, Saturday Night Live uh, weekend update and Howard Stern. Yep. <laughs> kind of mix if you're into fart jokes and midgets and blind guys that are virgins. Yeah, you guys got us come. on the fart joke quota. <laughs> uh, I mean, we used to look, have a little higher, but yeah, know, but it's kind of. We, we have a blind guy now. He, now his name is Blind Brian. He's a show regular, and we found out he's a 36 year old virgin. So I'm kind of want to wait till he's 40 so we can go 40 year old virgin. Mm-hmm. But uh, my ultimate goal is to find him a Uber driver or Lyft driver to be his girlfriend. 
because then he would always have a ride. Oh, so that, that's, wow! Uh, you're making dude, you're <laughs> making dreams come true yeah. over there. So, like yeah. you're helping you're helping society, right? Yeah, he's gonna have his own podcast too. You know, <laughs> the that... Big Picture with Blind Brian on Idiot Radio. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> All right, but it, well, nobody else is ready for the big question. Uh, this week, this is one. I think this is a meme that producer Missy found. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it. Actually, I'll pull up the image here. Uh, it was in the messages. No, that looks like secret stuff. Um, there, there, there was an image that came up with. Uh, with a uh, higher one, fire one, return one. And in this case, a uh, higher one, they're putting uh, Omega, Okada, and uh, Christopher Daniels, uh, and uh, uh, fire one, Baron Corbin, uh, uh, Braun and Dolph, return one, CM Punk, oh, Edge, and Batista. Uh, so in a version of Fuck, Mary Kill, <laughs> if you could hire someone from WWE, fire one from WWE, and return a WWE alum, we'll open this up. Who would be your picks? That's Who would like to tackle so this first? It is, it is. So, so we have. Wait, hold on. So we have to hire someone that's never someone outside there? of WWE that's never been there. Yes. Who do you fire pick? someone who's currently there and bring back an oldie but a goodie? Yes. Huh. You must balance the scales, Mad Mike. Wow. Who do I hate enough to send to WWE? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right. I got this. Okay. I got this here. Easy. Fire Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Fire Kenny Omega. And what was, what was the third? Re- Return an oh. alumni. Return. Cody! Ta-da! And now Larry wants to draw again. Nope. Nope. Yep. I peti- nope. I petition for the release. No, he stays with New Japan where Dolph Ziggler does amazing. Yep. That's what I'll do. And he <laughs> becomes the next uh, uh, Kenny Omega. I don't know about that, but he'll be, be pretty good. I don't know. I think I think <laughs> the guy just needs some he, motivation. He could, he could be the next Cody, maybe. He just it's, it's a complacency thing with him. It has to be, right? Right? Oh, yeah. I think yeah. he just wants to do comedy but needs a backer. Or, or better writers. Well, yeah. They all need better writers. All right. Who wants to try it next? I need a minute. You need a minute? Yeah. Todd, you, what about you, Matt? Uh, Main Street, Matt? Uh, I know who his return is. Um, I know who his return is. You know who my return is? Yes. I don't even know who my return is. How am I supposed to know who your Because I spent a week with you in New Orleans. I know exactly who you're going to say once you think of it. No, I didn't think about that. Um, I go. I'll go. I'll go. Uh, I'm going to say hire hire RJ City because Good. he's Mr. Sports Entertainment to begin with, and I I don't know if they'll get the copyright for Knee Arthur uh, from the Golden Girls uh, uh, estate. Uh, I would return. I had it in my head for a moment. Had it in my head for a moment. No, I just want to hire a bunch of people, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would return Juice Robinson. You stop that. Nice. Technically, okay. he was on WWE, uh, NXT. Once yep. his hand heals from punching through a chair uh, from this weekend, apparently. Uh, Larry was telling Poor me. Juice. He's still wrestling it? with that what broken we got? hand. We got to let go somebody? We got to let somebody go? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God, what, Kurt Hawkins, just put the... Oh, why? He's collecting a paycheck, man. He's collecting a paycheck. He's got kids. Uh, he is. Or no, 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 you're thinking sorry. Sorry. He's later. He's later. someone who doesn't need that paycheck, like Randy Orton. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, actually, That's I good. can agree with That's that. Good. I can agree with that. Like we don't, like we don't need him around, right? If you're like, hey, Randy's back. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's when you get sad and disappointed that someone oh. returns. Don't you need to try a movie career or something? I mean. He tried. He he went to the papers if he had to. He would. He would. But uh, yeah, that's fine. Mainstream Matt, you gotta be ready. Uh, all right. Fire Brock Lesnar. <laughs> so that, <laughs> yes. So yes. the undisputed title will be can be liberated and put onto someone else. Have Ronda Rousey win it. Could work. Um, 
return return CM Punk against his will. Wow. <laughs> it's his community have him service. Kind of promo every single week just because I want to hear him just miserable and basically held against his will. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how it was before they let him go. Um, <laughs> and who are we going to hire? I'm going to try to go off the page a little bit. Just out of state, out of the Far East. Hire Dalton Castle because if there's anyone out there who looks like they just like need to be just dropped right into the middle of Monday Night Raw, it's Dalton Castle. And Dad, bring the boys with you. Dad, do you want me to tell you who I thought your return was going to be? Who? Bad News Barrett. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, I, I thought that was I thought that was a gimme. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Still having trouble getting over. I miss. I, I miss know. Bad. That's what I'm saying. Dude, did you hate it whenever like your your favorite wrestler got let go like five years ago, and no one in WWE has sufficiently filled that void since then? Like you did not. I have not adopted a new favorite wrestler since Bad News Barrett left. Like, <laughs> it's been on. a rough five years <laughs> for you. I can't find my rebound. It's just not. It's not working. Oh, uh, you're just not ready for a new relationship. I understand. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been five tried, years. Have you um, tried FarmersOnly.com? <laughs> <laughs> have you tried BritishWrestlersOnly.com? Um, <laughs> maybe that UK show will give me some. Uh, yeah, look at that Osprey rust. kid. Look at that Grado. I. I, I mean. Okay, maybe not Grado right now. Oh, but definitely not. Yeah. I mean, okay. That Osprey, that Osprey kid is awesome. Who is that? What? Grado, Grado, what's the next AIW show? Grado's like on a poster with that with somebody ridiculous. Sorry, I have to look at that. Um, Larry, what, what's your picks? No? All right. Um, yeah, you got it. You got it. Right. Go on. We're going to fire Roman Reigns. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I love never it. Hire I stole that again. one from me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll pick somebody else. <laughs> no, I got a, no, I got no, a backup. Sure? I got a okay. backup. All right. Yeah. Um, we're going to hire Marty the Moth. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and oh god, I didn't think of who to bring back. I feel like we've done that. We've um, done this with well, Lucha Marty, Underground. Marty could be a return. No. Ah, he no. Was on, he was on, on, well, they yeah. already brought back Ellsworth. I don't so. count tough enough for. Okay, mm, I'm just um, saying. Mm. I'm just saying, if you can't think of a return and wants to hire someone else, <laughs> you know what? Let's bring back. Um... Oh, they they're injured. So. No, no. Let's bring no, back Vicky no. Guerrero. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. I don't, I don't like hate it. that. I don't hate that at all, Larry. I want to live in your WWE. <laughs> That's a great idea. All those are great. I ideas. want to live in the WWE in your head. Uh, what about you? Todd? Better yet, hold on. Better oh, wait, yet, wait, wait, wait. Vicky Guerrero is going to be Marty the Moth's manager. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Oh. Good ideas. What about you, Todd? You I say it? hire. I'm just going to go with somebody I know, and I think you'd fit great in Two Five Live. DJ Z. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see him there. Uh, fire. Uh, I think it would be hilarious if they just fired Ellsworth again. No, <laughs> stop that. <laughs> but no, oh, but no I'll, I'll say Bailey. I, I like. Oh. I hate her stupid face. <laughs> um, wow! <laughs> a freaking break. Wow. Todd's not a hugger. No. <laughs> like the anti. I, just, uh, I don't know. I just her face. So I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, oh, wow. to replace Bailey, bring AJ back. AJ Lee. AJ Lee. I'd like that. Yeah, okay. definitely. Uh, we have we have so many from the chat room, guys. It looks like that that popped a little bit. Uh, as, but from there, Alexander Carr says, hire Juan Francisco de Coronado, fire okay. Dolph Ziggler, and return Scotty Goldman. <laughs> Never heard of what? Yeah, <laughs> some guy named Scotty Goldman. I think he goes by <laughs> Cold something, Cabarna. Scott, Scott Free. Scott Free, yeah. <laughs> um, hire, uh, Tina Key says, hire Omega, fire Orton, bring Johnny back. Johnny Ace? Mundo? No, no, not Johnny Ace. Johnny Ace? <laughs> and his skateboard. Oh, I would love to have Johnny oh, Ace Oh, jeez. Um, in 2018. Alex what has Miller? happened to us? We want Johnny Ace back. What in the hell has happened to us? Alex right. Miller says, hire Nido, fire Ono, return Sammy Callahan. Wait, he said change his fire to Roman Reigns, which is much better. Oh, okay. 
Um, Podner says, "Fire Dolph, hire Abyss, mm. return AJ Lee." Hey, he he made it like- on that twenty four seven. God, I uh, you know I really want Abyss to join the Bl- Bludgeon Brothers. Join the Bludgeon Brothers, but then oh, I should have fired also them. managed by Joseph Parks. Yes, these are good ideas. These are great yeah. ideas. Also, his feud with Kane, who's managed by McFoley. <laughs> because reasons all right and from that um let's i i got a i got a special announcement here but before we get to that i want to give a shout out to our friends at occupy pro wrestling pro wrestling is a wild and crazy art form and occupy pro wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun featuring articles blogs and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans Occupy Wrestling is putting the smart back in Smart Mark. Please check it out at OccupyProWrestling.com. And thank you so much to those guys for supporting what we're doing over here. Uh, they're sharing a lot of the shows and interviews that we're doing the Wrestling Mayhem Show Network, and we really do appreciate it. Check it out. Thank you, uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling, for that. By the way, guys, I know, I know it is Rusev Day, but what are the odds that Rusev Day just so happens to have fallen on Followed on, fallen on, fallen mm. on Rey Mysterio Day, you guys. That, that's why I said booyaka booyaka when I opened the show. Oh well, we're bringing it back around. That was foreshadowing. Honored and grateful <laughs> says Rey Mysterio's Twitter uh, with the city of San Diego six one nine for officially naming today six nineteen Rey Mysterio Day. So there you go, booyaka booyaka. It's Rey Mysterio Day and. Uh, San Diego. It took How him, did he get out of that cage? How did he get out of the temple's basement? Somebody dug him out. It was a it was a city contract. Maybe that's his son wearing his I mask. I don't think that's the that real word mysterious. That's not for me. Yeah. That, can't that, would explain a lot. That, <laughs> that would explain a lot. That would explain a lot. Did you guys see the obituary for... Um, it made me so sad. For I, did, I saw it. I didn't have the heart to Dario read it. Cueto. Can we talk? Wait, can we talk about Ant- Antonio Cueto real quick? Antonio Cueto? What is your thing with Antonio Cueto? I popped so hard. That was the <laughs> funniest thing in the world. Oh my god, he's my new favorite character on Lucha Underground. He shows up. He's him and Godfrey are the only ones that show up to the funeral. I like that. Like right before Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cueto. Taking over the picture of his. Son. Oh my god! <laughs> and also, I mean, the best. And if you guys didn't see the the Mayhem Underground, we had. Uh, uh, and if you're wondering about, you know, we had the Red Bull with Dario Cueto. Uh, apparently, you know, he has the Black Bull on his uh, cane. Antonio is his thing, and uh, Krista Joseph has one of the canes in his office that he showed us on the on the uh, stream. So, yeah. Um, so no, that was that was a lot of fun with Lucha Underground. They started with Aztec Warfare. We got to see it was it was a great uh, uh, our chat on Wednesday night. You know, kind of realizing, holy crap, we just saw like a lot of who's who's new, who's kind of still around. You know, setting up a lot of kind of stuff with that. You know, I mean, you threw twenty guys in there in the first uh, show in one match, right? And had a lot of fun with that. And it was uh, it was for the Lucha Underground Championship, uh, Pentagon Dark. I remember what show we're talking about uh, is uh, is part of that, or it, it was a part of that. And defending, and uh, I, don't know, I won't get spoilery with you, I guess. But uh, no, it was a lot of fun. It wasn't like like some of them that we had in the past, where we just opened with a crazy montage. I well, don't, that's, that's I don't, I don't, I don't think yeah. anything beats the um, Vampiro in the Insane Asylum. Oh my god, that like was so that good. was the best piece. What's that? With Honky Tonk Man as a cop. With Honky Tonk Man as a cop. Well, that was wait. That was that okay. Was, the season, Vampira was the season two open. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And the hon- Honky is the uh, whatever the the warden mm-hmm. was uh, the season three open. Right. By the way, great theory oh. about uh, his phone conversation with Honky Tonk Man uh, on that podcast as well. <laughs> that, that you're gonna have to listen to yeah uh but uh no i think it was good it's good that it's back i know uh mad mike feels like a part of his soul has returned yes yes actually i feel like um thanos unsnapped his fingers and a part of me was returned it was it was so lovely mm-hmm. tell him to snap it again and get rid of the rock <laughs> Jeez. wow for, for- 
for me, it was really jarring. I I, I wasn't ready for how different it was going to feel mm-hmm. um, watching the show. And I, I'm still kind of like wrapping my brain around it a little bit, but I think we're going to be okay. And Lucha, we trust. So mm-hmm. we got our, our one, the one fixed point of our wrestling fandom is Lucha Underground. So yes. uh, we, we try to rely on that. But yeah, it was just, it, it, it was weird in a way and, and different, very different in other ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of questions. Also, <laughs> of questions. also speaking of some of the, uh, uh, others of the 14 hours of wrestling that we're trying to watch every week. Um, this was, I saw this last week and I kind of love this Leo rush going to two Oh five live. Um, no, no, Mike. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still angry with what he said about Emma. What did he say about Emma? He gave Emma shit when she got fired. Oh, that's why I feel like he's going to 205. I feel like it's a demotion. It's a demotion if they well, kick him to 205? No. He, they could have kept him on NXT and he could be doing. But Ricochet's so much Ricochet. better at it. That's true. <laughs> That's kind of. What That's true. Is. We're like, oh, he's <laughs> way too similar <laughs> and not as good as Ricochet. Leo Rush is kind of like the Akira Tozawa. Like, as soon as they hired Tozawa, like, oh, wait, hi, we also fired. We also hired Finn and Nakamura. They're both better at this than you. <laughs> I love the Finn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. I can see that. Um, it's like they they got heavy machinery. Heavy machinery is awesome. Hey, these guys can be new tag champs. Oh wait, we just signed War Machine. Bye. That's not an upgrade, Charlie. Man, no. what? That's, I don't wait, think they, that's okay. An upgrade. Your your personal feud with Ray Rowe no, aside. Yeah, aside that aside. Heavy machinery is ten times as entertaining as War Raiders. I guess say in, in commentary, yes. In, oh, in general, shakes and weights, man. Steaks, steaks and weights. Steaks and weights. Steaks. steaks and what did I say? Shakes and weights. Shakes and weights. Yeah, I'm sure there's shakes too. Sorry, you gotta have that protein. Steak, shakes, and weights. Yeah, they're ten times entertaining than War Raiders, even in the ring. Well, you can't do. Can you party with heavy machinery? No, you're gonna you're gonna party with war uh, raiders. No, I'm not. No one from no one from heavy machinery has challenged me to an IWC title. Match, that is so. true. That is true. God, all of you guys got beats for Ray Row here. We're all <laughs> getting up. We're all gonna gang up on him. That's the only way. way. I want to change who I'm firing. You want to change who you're firing? You're gonna fire Ray Row? I'm firing Ray Row. That's, the other bearded guy wow. can stay. You know what? He can stay if that's the case. Uh, Warbeard Hanson is going to stay, yes. and he's going to team with Keith Lee. What? Keith okay. Lee. Who's that? Uh, yeah, he's, we talked about him earlier in this nope. show. Oh, we did? Yeah. You can oh. call them Heart and Soul. Heart and Soul. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Jeez. Uh, Todd, are you keeping up with any of these side shows? No. <laughs> they kind of are side shows, aren't they? Yeah. Honestly, NXT and Lucha are great. I highly mm-hmm. recommend them. Absolutely. They're fantastic. I, I wish I had time to. Sound... Yeah, the great thing, if you do have the opportunity, like NXT, it is good to watch the show from week to week if you have time for it, but at least check out those takeovers. I'm yeah. fine just like, watching you, takeovers. You really don't need to go for the ride, but you yeah. will be um, rewarded for going for the ride. Yeah. You know what I mean? And plus, it's four hours a month. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's like. Um, Replace a raw with it, <laughs> so you're yeah. cool. You're yeah. cool. Instead like, of watching for, raw one, week, just catch up on NXT for the month. Yeah, yeah, you're good. It seems like that first hour of raw lately has been good. The rest, mm-hmm. is, it just deflates because it's the because they know it's the hour that people watch. Yep, and yeah. they flame out, flame out. And then Reigns comes on, and I fall asleep. Yes. Yep, <laughs> and it's like that's my that's my Nyquil. Speaking of which, I felt like. Uh, Money in the Bank was for a four-hour show actually kind of well paced. Yeah, mm-hmm. because no. it, it seemed like it seemed like um, you know yeah, okay we got you know it wasn't we're going to start with women's Money in the Bank kind of go up and down and oh god are we getting to the main event yet? That was you my know? problem. Is that's what I started with. I started what with the women's Money in the Bank match. Okay, I missed everything before that. Okay, and you didn't miss much because it was like Brian and Cass and yeah. like a, another match, and and that was it. There was right? another one. What was the other one? I don't know if it was well paced, considering they did not have time for the Raw Tag Team Title match. Yeah, I don't know. They just just scrapped it. And maybe that's the best. Maybe that's something that was supposed to be in between like the title and the Money in the Bank match. But I, right. you know, just go and build. 
right? And uh, and I thought that that worked for something like that. Yes, yes, producer Messi, you're. You're glad that they stopped scrapping women's matches. <laughs> there were three women's matches on that pay-per-view. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That kind of shows where they're at. So it's good to see. All right. I uh, just need to start scrapping the talking segments. That's right. Time to find out, guys. Oh, I flipped something. What did you learn from wrestling this week? I'm going to start with Larry to find out what he learned from uh, the continent of Japan. I no, learned I mean, Juice Robinson's a beast. He broke his hand in a match on Sunday, Saturday, Saturday. I don't know. I watched it Sunday, so we're going to say Sunday on Sunday. Wrestled the whole match. Jay White put his hand in a chair after it was broken. And it was actually broken. Like it swelled up. Like like it it looked wood. broken, it was, right? It was really broken. Yeah. Put his hand in the chair. He pulled it out at the last second. Jay White picked it up. He punched him through the chair in the face with his broken hand. <laughs> That's intense. That, yeah. That's my new favorite feud in wrestling right now. Yeah. Is Jay White and Juice Robinson. Hmm. Which awesome. you can see on July 8th. <laughs> so, Larry, Larry, do you think that, like, um, do you think that, um, oh, shit, what's Finley's son's Dave name Finley? now? David Finley. Finley. Do you think David Finley, even though he's, do you think he, uh, if if Juice beats Jay White, that David Finley is going to somehow go insane because he didn't get to beat Jay White because they've been kind of going around and around. Uh, I don't know. I th- I think I I don't really know enough about Dave Finley. Like I just yeah, you're, watching you're, yeah, it. you're just getting into like, it now this week. I know they're tag team partners, mm-hmm. so I don't I don't know. But it he's is entertaining though. It is fun because uh, Larry actually um, described to me the concept of Nido. A few weeks ago, well, it was you that did that, wasn't it? What about him? Oh, just like uh, like his deal in the Los Ingra Ingla. No, I don't know that. I think that was the, the guest you had on. Oh, the dude from the Zone Wrestle Zone something. Oh, that guy. That's right, because he covered the New Japan. Yeah. Well, you were there too, and it was about New Japan. Yeah. So never mind. Never mind. Larry's still learning. Someone, uh, someone asked on Twitter. Uh, someone on Twitter over the weekend said they didn't understand Alistair Black and they wanted someone to explain it to them. And someone <laughs> replied to him, one, karate, two, Satan. And that was all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, three, go to, go to Hot Topic in the back where they still have like. Behind the young book. Go to Hot Topic. Things back in with 19- buckles. Back in 1998. That's where Alistair Black's inspiration lurks in the back of the Hot Topic. <laughs> That's where you should be billed from. From Same the fair. back of the hot topic, Alistair Black. <laughs> I love Alistair Black. Oh, okay. I do quasi miss the days when Hot Topic was just like a bunch of death metal um, going off, and it was very dark in there. Like it's like too, it's like almost too colorful these days. It's way too friendly. Even I'm comfortable going in there now. So you know, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> although, although I keep my New Japan up there now, so I'm okay with it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. A lot of that stuff going on. All right, uh, what do you got, uh, Mad Mike? What'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that Vince McMahon snapped his fingers, and we finally have an answer to the oft asked question. How you doing? Big uh, Cass, he's not feeling too good. <laughs> he's not feeling too good. Hey, just fades away. <laughs> Actually, no. I, I, I learned I learned that out of the trio of Enzo, Cass, and Carmella, uh, Enzo, uh, Carmella was the Shawn Michaels, and the other two Jamokes were both Genetis. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Dual oh. Genetis. I don't know. Even Janetti came back for like one-off appearances, though. Yeah, and I'm sure Cass will too. Okay. Yeah. I don't think Enzo's coming back. Cass will at some point come back to like when Carmella goes for the world title in a main event at WrestleMania against Ronda Rousey. Cass will kick off the head of Ronda Rousey. No, no, because <laughs> Ellsworth is going to be there. That's a joke. She doesn't. She doesn't need big Cass. She's got James Ellsworth. She's got all the muscles she needs. Yeah. Mainstream Matt, what did you learn from wrestling this week? All right, I learned that uh, WWE's roster of play-by-play announcers is as deep as I think I could ever recall it being. Because, um, I mean, just Tom Phillips is really good. Michael Cole, you know, he, he's, he is Michael Cole. Good. Some people love him, but you can't 
and I'm he has tenure at this point. It's fine. Uh, Moro is clearly great. Vic Joseph did take over. He did a hell of a job, Sword, but mm-hmm. still not Moro. He's our boy from Cleveland, old uh, Prime I mean, Wrestling not- days. I used to work with. Yeah, he, I mean he's not Moro he, yet. But by the you way, know what? Get he, dropped in he, there. That's they're they're four deep, Sword. Yes, What's right. the last time that the, the play by play roster was four well, deep? No, yeah, they're all bad. good. Man, they're only one deep on color. That's true. But oh, I well, forgot to. I, I like Byron. I forgot to I mention. Know was good too. So I watched the Moro documentary. Yeah, I did yeah, too. I did too. Good. Holy yeah. crap! Whoa, you want to feel really sad? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> It was also inspirational. It was to a point. Some points relatable. Different. You feel really sad. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, and it, 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 it struck a chord because I, I recently a friend uh, a friend that I've known I've worked with for several years um, uh, uh, came out himself as bipolar publicly, um, and and he's been having a thing where he's been talking with people about it and talking about what it's like and and trying to help with the stigma of it. And then that was like the next week that I saw the trailer for that. Uh, so I think it's really, I think it's really important thing. And and if you want to be like, you you know, see what the deal is. And, 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 and I listened to, I was watching the last couple NXT episodes after watching the documentary. And then like, there's a whole new context to his commentary after that. You're like, Oh, that's why he's that, this, you know, Mm -hmm. that into it and everything like that. Cause remember when Morrow came up and everybody's like, wow, he's like too excited. Yep, that, that, that's, that's that's for a reason. Why. Like that's yep. how he operates, and that's why he's so good at what he does. So that's pretty. I mean, it was it was it was a nice thing, and it is. Yeah, I recommend anybody go get a trial from Showtime late somewhere, and 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 you know take a yeah, look. Yeah, it's watch a for crazy it. good documentary, but yeah. man, it talks about Ooh, there, everything. There are there are points in it like you just feel sad. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's not. It it you will be uncomfortable watching yeah. this thing. Um, it was kind of a tough watch uh, here it, in the studio. It, 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 you can put on the background and just listen to it because it's yeah. gonna draw. It's gonna draw you in. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Todd DeFazio, Idiot Radio. What did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned this week that I'm. I kind of miss uh, Baron Corbin's receding hairline. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be the return for the big question instead? He's gonna re- his hairline. Yeah, I, I changed my return. Back. I want Baron's hair back. Has is partial hair back he's yeah. getting to the point of like when kane first shaved his head and it was like yep mm-hmm. like almost to the very peak of his head mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i get it i he one he needs a shirt he's not gonna sweat through we learned yeah. this week that's also what what he learned from wrestling is <laughs> i need to get some different material <laughs> so I, I just i don't know i'm not feeling the bald head mm-hmm. i don't know I think it's gonna grow. I think it's gonna grow. No, he he's, can't. He's. Balding. I mean, no, no. I mean, it's gonna grow on us. <laughs> Maybe he got the hair surgery. That's why I shaved. I don't know. The hair uh, surgery. Wait, he's got the plugs. You are saying? I'm thinking he got the the transplant. He got the. He's like he's like the Fink when they had the hair cover for men guy on uh, the pay per view the one time. <laughs> so he's like, what the Fink has hair? What's going on? I do feel so robbed so that we girl. haven't had, that we didn't get a hair or yeah. hair match. Yeah. Yeah. Chavo, did, Chavo did one of those hair transplants. I saw him on a doc, uh, an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real thing. Oh, oh, geez. He looked up an infomercial for. Uh, for like hair club for men or something like that, and Chavo Guerrero is on there. And look at him now. Hey, stunt coordinator it's not like for no Glow, one's gonna notice your hair is You might as well, you know, get some paid for it. There you go. Uh, I learned this week that uh, one. Um, I'm now officially a huge fan of Sonny Vice. If you haven't heard of, heard of him, he's uh, been involved with Premier Wrestling and uh, Welterweight Wrestling in Cleveland, and most recently Rise Wrestling with a Y. Point that out. Um, and, uh, he was teaming this weekend with, uh, uh, Lee Moriarty. You may, re- may remember him from a few episodes ago when we were trying to teach him how to make like an angry face because he smiles too much. Yes. And we had to do, we had him do the lion face, lemon face, but he didn't know what a lemon tasted like. So it didn't really work too well. <laughs> and by the way, I, I caught up with him and he says he's been working on his lion face and he's got a great lion face now. But I, I'll believe it when I see it. Um, he, he need- on a lemon though just to try it just that's right that's right i told gannon jones to give him a lemon um it's, it's with no context acting. it's all about method acting it's, exactly well if you if you go over we did the intermission and uh had a lot of fun with uh lee but uh they came out uh sunny vice lee moriarty came out as the new tag team that's going to be your favorite tag team moriarty vice uh and there's a mm-hmm. uh, sunny vice that came out with uh <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> I don't think weirdest 
like Sherlock Holmes reboot I've ever heard. It, of. It, yeah, it's how it kind of does, doesn't it? Uh, they had the shirts, they had the glasses, they had the squirt guns, they had the 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 fake badges. Uh, Lee Moriarty was uh, 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 introducing himself as uh, uh, Axel Full Lee. Uh, they can, uh-huh. they're also <laughs> otherwise known as uh, uh, was it? I think it's Miami Lee. Uh, was the other name that they were trying to? They're trying to. They were literally like, like had a poll on Twitter like a half an hour before they went out of which name they should be announced as. But um, uh, if he comes out as Axel Foley, mm-hmm. his new finisher has to be the called the banana in the tailpipe. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but that's what it has to be called. Banana in the tailpipe. I, I've seen that, him. That's a Beverly Hills Cop reference. That story. is. That is. <laughs> I've yes. seen Lee wrestle a few times. I, I'm big fan of Lee. He's I, insane. I uh he has a big future in front of He's him. Good. I think I think uh I think uh Larry's gonna be seeing him on New Japan World very, very soon. We yeah. just need to get him to be angry. Yeah. He's gotta work on that anger. <laughs> He's gotta work thing. on that anger face. You know <laughs> he needs a match with Suzu- uh, with uh Suzuki. <laughs> <Let's go> to- <laughs> <laughs> He'll show him how to be angry. Yeah, it's gonna show him how to die. Jeez. You want him dead? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we like Lee. We we like Lee. He's an okay guy. But he'll learn Don't, how to frown. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh. no one better to learn how to frown from, except for maybe Brock Lesnar. Scariest man to see in person. By the way, I want to roll back because uh, I was talking about uh, um, uh, Grado. And, uh, and, and because AIW um, knock it out of the park all the time, their upcoming show is, uh, you guys know Dick Justice? I heard of him. He's an indie mm-hmm. guy. He's a cop. He's a cop. Dick, Ju- Dick cop. Justice. Super right. cop. Dick Justice. Was he the yeah. one that was in here with Wallace? No, we didn't. We we haven't had a conversation with him yet. Maybe on Twitter. But you can go check out at AIW in Cleveland. Grado and Dick's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> so, uh, on June twenty second, uh, up there in Cleveland, uh, AIWWrestling.com. Which so, one's which? Which one's which? The one on the left is Grado, and the one on oh, the right okay. is All Super right. Cop Just Dick checking. Justice. Just checking. Uh, so that's for some of you guys out there. <laughs> oh, another indie wrestling. You check out indiewrestling.us. I know we name drop it a few times, but you can check out a lot of our friends, including Miami. I'm sorry, but Moriarty, Mor- Moriarty Vice over there. Um, and of course, it may be hot outside, but the action is hotter in the ring, especially in that gymnasium with the RWA. That's why you can check out some Renegade Wrestling Alliance this month. 25% off with the promo code HOT2018. H-O-T 2018. Check out them and uh, other people we've name dropped. Like DJZ is on there a lot. <laughs> yeah, my yep, buddy. There you go. <laughs> Dean Radford on there representing that I know uh, is your I buddy. Dean. You managed yes. Dean over at PWX. Yeah. We don't have any PWX. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we did not capture that one. Uh, but uh, them, RWA, Rise Wrestling with a Y, Welterweight Wrestling. You can check out what the Sunny Sunny Vice is about over there, too. Um, you can see Lee as a bad guy in Cleveland. Guess how much he frats. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, thank you so much, everybody that's been supporting indie wrestling over there. Indie wrestling dot us uh, video on demand, digital downloads of tons and tons of content, and of course the Indie Mayhem Show interviews are over there. Great Indie Mayhem Show this week with um, we dubbed them the Indie Guys, um, and and I think I think I qualify them as the real guys that run uh, Pittsburgh Indie Wrestling um, because they're everywhere. Uh, I, it's, it's, it's rare that I run into a show that they're not at uh, in my travels. But uh, good interview with them. The uh, Pow Cancer 2 is happening this weekend and also carried on IndieWrestling.us, uh, the original one, and we'll be there to film, at least some of us that aren't going to Nebraska. Um, and uh, a really good charity. Uh, check out more information for that. Stomp out cancerpgh.com i believe off the top of my head that graphic has not popped up on my computer uh but uh uh thanks go check them out it's, it's for the uh, american cancer society so i just want to give them extra uh, uh, uh extra shout out there and once again we do have some videos from last year's event up on the indie wrestling.us twitter and in the end even if it's in the end in the name of uh the american uh, uh cancer society uh, give a donation over there you know, let them know uh, that you did because of Stomp Out Cancer. Uh, if you hit them up, uh, Stomp Out PGH on the Twitter. Uh, thanks to those guys, uh, Matt, Classic Ken, and Jesse the Mark, who, by the way, does the art. Actually, I think he probably did that post for AIW because he works for AIW. Uh, and they do the ones for IWC and a lot of the guys that we work with, too. Just devastating work for indie wrestling, making it look like com- 
even more awesome than it already is so uh get people's attention so anyways thank you so much everybody we got a lot of events coming up uh we have a lot of guests lined up for the show next week chris larusso the mm. new iwc tag team champion well earned too. He's one. He's one title away from the IWC Grand Slam champion. Yep, yep. Uh, also, we're going to have an interview on Wednesday, June twenty seventh, with the Boar of Moldova from Chikara. I uh, saw him at Can Trios a couple years ago, and uh, he just wants to talk wrestling with people that aren't shitty. Was pretty much the gist of his tweet. So, like, hey, come on over. Let's talk. Uh, so I'm excited to have that interview <laughs> next Wednesday. Also coming up on the 3rd of July, Marcus Mann is going to come with us to talk about John Cena and something new as well. And also we're going to have uh, Chad, Todd, I'm sorry, Jorso. We'll find out. I'll know it before we get there. Uh, from Phil Singer Games. They're actually coming to town uh, the weekend uh, that weekend for uh, Galacticon, which is also an IWC show and also Extreme Rules weekend. Uh, for their card game of course they classically do a lot of cards uh great awesome wrestling art cards um for a game that they do with legends of pro wrestling ring of honor jakar has been represented by them uh we actually talked with todd uh, i'm sorry tom filsinger uh several years ago on this show and it's cool to circle back with those guys and see them coming into town and uh, look we might be doing some extra coverage of uh, galacticon that weekend as well and so if you're coming out to that Keep an eye out for some Mayhemers, perhaps. And, of course, we'll see you at the uh, IWC show as well. Once again, Todd DeFagio, thanks you for uh, joining us. I'm glad I'm glad we didn't, like, I, I, I felt like we lost you and Patreon in the bank. Oh, I felt no, like we, we threw a little too much at you last time. It was good to get you here and in the conversation. I'm a big fan, man. Uh, where can everybody check out what's going on one more time uh, idiotradio.net uh, doubledshow.com and uh, the Jim Crenn fan page on Facebook for the uh, n- latest episode of No Restrictions which drops every uh, Monday Thank if you're you. an old DVE for the Pittsburgh people uh, DVE fan you'll love Jim classic stuff coming out of there go check it out I know we have some people all around the west coast in the middle all across the country but uh, go check it out it's uh, if you like the comedy here, you're probably gonna love the comedy over there too. Yeah. Uh, so you know, well, well, we're not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hilarious. <laughs> yes, you are. Earthquake International Industries, aka Dark Horse. Dark Horse. Per- Dark Horse. Dark. <laughs> Dark Forge. Forge. Thank you. I Dark. want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> you don't sponsor this show. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're gonna people. <laughs> Larry, where can people find the shit you do? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Some come to the basement of Sorgatron Media. I got go. axes and shit. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Darkforgestudios.co. Start there too. Give a special knock on the front door and whisper, "Girthquake." They'll know what you mean. You have a sign on the front door now too. I, oh yes, yes yeah. I do. It's a nice sign. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Producer Missy is also uh, print expert Missy <laughs> as well, making sure. Well, we got a few, one too many knocks on the door that were not for us. So, anyways, uh, also Mad Mike four eight eight three on the tweets. Yeah, I, I talk about wrestling. I talk about other fun stuff. Also, tomorrow night, Lucha is back. Um, I'm going to be live tweeting as per usual for the hashtag FM, and I'm probably going to be doing a solo Lucha show after that because Sorg will be on a plane. We'll do something. Um, I think I was talking mainstream Matt about maybe doing something uh, Thursday night, but there will be some mayhem underground shenanigans of some sort. Started a new show, then already too busy for the new show. Podcasting cool. expert right here. Uh, mainstream Matt, one T on the Twitter. Thanks for having me, Sorg. Mad Mike, um, let's never fight again. <laughs> I don't want to fight again with you, Matt, for another 10 yards. Oh, uh, <laughs> Producer Missy on the ones and twos and the yells across the room and the loud sighing. Thank you so much for dealing with this and uh, and, and the big question for this week as well. And Larry's new sign. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us in the chat room. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait for the perfect time in the Don't give up what you want. Take it back. 
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.